Hi, this is May's Design Corner, and today I'm trying to redo my pantry with things that I make ahead of time so that my cooking will be easier. When we had our home still full of children, I made all my seasonings and I made everything so that it'll be easier for me to cook these things. Okay, so now I'm going to go and show you how I started doing my grits uh, because, you know, when you're in a hurry and you got to add this, add that, your grits will not turn out the way you want them to sometimes. So I'm going to show you what we did in our family, and I've been doing it for a long time. Um, I've been having a house since I was 16, so I've been having a house uh, almost 60 years, okay? Okay, so I'm going to show you how I did my grits uh, for my family. A lot of people say, I wash my grits. Well, yeah, you can wash them but, and drain them, but I have a better way. Okay, let's get started. Now here, I have a strainer here, and I use this strainer uh, for my grits. I'm going to use this strainer because this is what I need for my grits. And then here, I'm using these grits. I don't have uh, no purpose, whatever, for the grits, you know, whatever grits is grit. And then I have some instant non-fat dry milk. And then I have my container right here that I'm going to put my grits in because I keep everything in a container and keep it marked. This is the top. My top will be marked. I had a mark on it, but see, you see the top is so old, most of my markings and came off. Okay, so this is what I do. Now, let's get started. Here is what I do. I take one package of the instant non-fat dry milk. Let me open that. See that package there? One package. I use one package of instant non-fat dry milk per 32 ounces of grits. See? That's 32 ounces. Can you see that? 32 ounces. Okay. Now, what I do with this, I'm going to take some parchment paper, and I put it down on the counter here. Got my parchment paper down there. And I got, um, I'm going to take my grits, and I'm going to put them in here. And I have some more in here to make my whole 32 ounces. I keep things in jars as well. And I'm going to pour that in there. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pour half of this in my, uh, this batch here. I pour it like this. See what I'm doing? Going to do half. That's about half right there. And then I push this out the way. Put that there. I'm going to shake my mixture together on this parchment paper. And this is how I do my grits. Because, see, you're going to have milk in those grits. This is going to make the milk be in the grits, okay? And I like to, to go ahead and do this. And that's going to separate everything. And then you're going to make your grits a little finer, too. Um, and while we're doing this, I like to talk to you about being a woman of God. You know, we have gotten away from being true women of God. You know, we are so in trying to be independent and do things on our own. But that's why our blessings are beginning to roll away because we're not living the life that God wanted us to live as Christian women. You know, a man is the head of the house. I don't care what you say. Some women don't like to hear that. But the truth of the matter is, a man is the head of the household. So we might as well get ourselves back in perspective when we come to that. Because a man is the head of the household. God made Adam first. And then from Adam, he took a rib and made a woman. So, uh, and Adam is supposed to work the land by the sweat of his brow. He didn't say how, 
And, but uh, that's what he's supposed to do. And we're supposed to be the helpmate. That don't mean because we're the helpmate that a man should dog us and do all manner of evil things against us. That's not what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to love us and we're supposed to work one with the other. You know, and a lot of people get everything all screwed up and messed up and get mad uh, when people go to talking about things like this. But, you know, you might as well tell the truth and shame the devil. My husband uh, taught me something as a young bride, and he he uh, groomed. Um, when he bought his paycheck home, he used to say, honey, he said, here's the check. He said, what we going to do? And I said, I don't know, you know, because I really didn't know. So he said, well, can I have $5? And, I, and it went from $5 to uh, $50 as years went along, you know. And then when we... Um, all our kids were grown and at the house, um, I we decided that he can keep whatever he was getting because we didn't have too much to do. We got together, sat down, and figured out the bills, and we did the bills together. And then whatever he had left, um, he can keep it in his pocket because I didn't know what he had to do, and he didn't know what I had to do. And a lot of people say, now nah, you get your man chance to get another woman. I don't care about that. Because if he out there going to get another woman with the little money that he got in his pocket, that's between her, him, and God. And one thing about it, honey, we got to learn not to run behind our men. Uh, and that, it's not necessary to run behind a man because if a man is truly yours, he going to be yours. And if he's not truly yours, you going to know it. Uh-huh. Because any man that run behind women all the time, that's not what God wants us to do, to be suffering behind trying to keep up with a man. That's not God's way. It really isn't. Y'all got to read the Bible and get a good understanding of what love and what marriage is all about. And I think that's what our problem is nowadays. Women have gotten in a corporate way and making more than men, and they got uh, their head got swole. And um, we're running the wrong direction. Well, you know, God put you in that position, in the corporate position. You know, the devil did that to break up the family, put give the woman the head job and had a man not doing nothing. They, uh, the devil did that to break up the family. You know, the family is the structure of God. Okay, so I got this down. And you see what's left in there? That's what you're going to throw away. I'm going to throw this away because it's just the ones that's left in there. So I'm going to take this little bag right here and open it. See, when people wash the grits, that's what they usually be trying to get. That old stuff in there. See, and I threw through it and put that in there to discard it. And I'm going to show you. Look at how those grits, they are finer. See, they are finer. And you got the milk already in there, okay? So now I'm going to pick this up like this. And I'm going to bring my uh, container over here. And I'm going to hold this in so it won't waste out. And I'm going to put it down in the container. There you go. And I'm going to put the container back over that way. And we're going to repeat the process. Going to put the, um, my strainer here. We're going to pour the grits here. And this is a full 32 ounce. I'm just going to go and put that there. Put my there. And I'm going to put the rest of the milk powder in there. See, the reason why I use a milk powder, and I usually put uh, crystallized butter in here, but... I didn't have any more today. You know, the crystallized butter that you get, it's, it's just like grits. It's crystal. I usually add that, too, in here with my grits, so I won't have to add butter or anything to it. But I just put this milk in there because, see, the milk is already there. Now, if you have a child that's um, lactose intolerant, what you're going to do is take this, um, take these grits and uh, uh, don't put the milk in it, but you're going to put them through the strainer and put them in a, in a thing. And you're going to label it the one, because, you know, you may have some people that come to your house that's lactose intolerant. So I have two kind of grits stored. I have the ones that I can use for folks that can have milk. And then I have one that 
that they can't use milk. And I usually put the butter flavor granules in there. You can get that from the store. But I use so much of this stuff, I don't have any. But you can get the butter flavor granules and put in with your grits as well. And you'll have the butter flavor in there. So don't forget, the ones in your family that can't have grits with the milk in it, always take some regular grits and put them through. And put them through here. And, and shake them again, put them through, so you can use it for them. And the ones that can have grits with the milk in it, this is what you do. You use your milk powder, your dry milk, instant dry milk. And I got this from Walmart. Yeah, instant dry milk. And the, um, the butter flavor granules, I put those in here too as well. Okay, so I'm going to finish shaking this out. I'm going to get all this shaking out. Because I want to make sure that I shake it all out and get all that stuff out. The reason why people rinse their grits because they have the want to get the uh, any kind of impurities out. But when you put it through the strainer like this, it takes the impurities out as well. Okay, let me get back to that marriage thing. Yeah, my husband used to bring his check to me, and we'd sit down and figure out what we had. And then, you know what? I used to present my check to my husband. Or oh, some women say, uh -huh. no, he ain't going to be all in my business. Well, he's not going to be all in your business. What you got married for? I mean, that's just part of marriage. Me and my husband both, when I started working, he... I brought my check to him, and he put his check there, and my husband wouldn't even cash his check until he brought it home for me to see it. I saw the, the check, not the stub, and we both used to go to the bank because um, the people at the bank where we banked that, they knew us. The bank used to be open on Saturday from uh, 9 to 12, and Saturday morning, we used to get up, get the children ready. And the first thing we do is go to the bank with our checks and put our, our checks in there in the bank together. And see that Friday night or one time my payday start coming on Wednesday. So I would hold my check to that Saturday until I time to go to the bank that uh that Saturday and put it in. And what we would do is add up our bills together and see how much the bills come together. And uh, we would pay our bills that way. So on Saturday, we would go to the bank and deposit both our checks in there. And then we would pay our um, pay our bills right out. We wrote our bills out before Saturday. Because what we did was we dropped the bills in the mailbox because we didn't have internet like we do now. You can go pay it on the net. But we used to drop our bills in the uh, post office uh, right after we deposit our checks. We drop the bills. And then we'd take the kids out for Saturday morning breakfast. And if you could talk to our kids, we always had outing Saturday morning breakfast. And sometimes we would go into another town and find nice little restaurants to go to to take our kids to uh, a Saturday morning brunch or a breakfast. And all the kids knew it. We didn't have to get our kids up on Saturday because they wanted to be ready to go to that uh, Saturday morning uh, breakfast or brunch. So, yeah, it's good to be on one accord, husband and wives and and uh, trust each other. Now, if you can't do that with your husband or with your wife, then you need to rethink your marriage and try to come up with something so you all can be on one accord with each other. It's not good to have separate things when you're married. And do you know we grew, our marriage grew, our, our finances grew, everything we had grew. It really did because we were doing what we were supposed to do as well as a husband and wife, as well as a, a husband and wife in the Lord was concerned. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're just about down to the end and see all this stuff that's left in there. See all that stuff that's left, all them little black spots and things that's left. That's the stuff that people call themselves rinsing the grits off and getting out of it. But see, what I'm doing is just shaking it, and it'll leave some stuff in there. Yeah, you're going to get some little uh, black specks in there still, too. 
but that's from the corn. That's not, uh, somebody said it was rat drippings. It's not, I know the United States is not good on, USDA is not good on uh, <laughs> saving up from eating different things, but this is not rat drippings. Okay, you see that? Now I'm going to discard that right here. I'm going to put my, my um, strainer there. Gonna pull this up together. Mm hmm. And I'm gonna take this up and I'm gonna pour it in here. There you go. Then you can just start that. You put your top on, make sure it's clean, put it on. Screw it on tight. And then you're gonna shake it a little bit more. I taught all my kids to preserve things and to do things this way so you won't have to work so hard preparing your meals. Now there's your grits in there with your milk and all you have to do is put your water in there a cup of water or two cups of water how many grits you're gonna make and then let them cook a five to ten minutes i like good creamy grits put your butter in there and you might want to add a little more a liquid milk if you want to but that one package of non-fat dry milk will have those grits really really creamy this is May's design corner saying thank you so very much for listening to me on and for list for looking at me make my creamy grits that I can store and these grits last quite a while y'all you know as long as that top stay tight on there you don't have to worry about it you can just dip them out put them in your water and start cooking this is May's design corner said bless you don't forget this is God's world he is totally in charge. And please, y'all, we must continue to pray. We must continue to pray. Mabel's Tables, my former name, has been changed to May's Design Corner. And it got changed, you all, because I looked up my... um my channel one day and Mabel's Tables was inter acting with my um channel mabel's tables was a restaurant and then someone had a play called mabel's tables and it was on my channel as well so i decided to go ahead and change the name to may's design corner don't forget to pray for someone else besides yourself and always know that god is in large and in charge and that this world belongs to god i love you with a passion god bless you and i will see you the next time on Quick and Easy Meals, who is uh, the Grace Life DIY and Deborah Kabasa. Be blessed. Love you. Bye-bye.